Coming up, call for room service on a homemade telephone. Find out why your bony back is so bendy. Put together a muscular model arm. And the stinky truth about baked beans and farting. Only one way to find out if baked beans really make you fart, and that means eating a whole can. I don't think I want to be around to find out what happens. Maybe I can listen in on Carrie Ann's homemade telephone. Today is the big checkers tournament between Larissa, Jordan, and me. But Jordan's missing. Let's go see where he is. Oh no! He's sick in bed. Oh well. Larissa and I will just have to play on without him. All right, back to the checkers. Hey, was that Jordan calling out? It sounded like him. We better go and check. Jordan needs some more juice. So it was him calling out. Hmm, how can we make it easier to hear him? I've got it. Let's make a telephone so Jordan can call us. Oops, almost forgot his juice. Sorry, Jordan. Michael, get that body moving. Phew, you're not looking too flexible, Mikey boy. Let's do some stretches. Stretch that back out. Our backs sure are bendy. Well, mine is anyway. Even though there's all that bone running up the middle, I wonder how our backs bend. Come on, Michael. Time to bone up on backbones. The secret to making a model spine is this. Marshmallow. They're not for eating. Not yet, anyway. I'll cut a few marshmallows to form five sticky pads. These get fed onto a piece of string with a cotton reel between each one. There. This is my model spine. It just needs one more thing. A spinal cord. It's our nerve pathway to the brain. And our backbone protects it. Finished. Turn around, Michael. It bends just like we do. Your spine is made up of 33 individual vertebrae with a spongy disc between each to keep them from rubbing together. The vertebrae can separate from each other when you want to bend. Your back muscles pull them together again when it's time to straighten up. So, Michael, your spine is nice and bendy, but can you do this? Ta-da! Hey, where'd he go? Dana's done a disappearing act on me too. Mm. Let's see how Carrie Ann's telephone's coming along while I finish off these beans. Uh oh. This old telephone is very broken, but it's gonna come in handy. Ah, thanks, Dad. Nice job. He drilled two holes right through this cardboard tube for us. I'd made two grooves down to the lead in these big pencils. OK, poke the big pencils through the holes and wedge our sharpened half pencil between the big pencils so the leads wriggle against each other. Looking good! Let's add a power supply. The wire from one end of this battery attaches to a pencil and the other end to this length of wire. That's going to be our long telephone cable. This side of our telephone cable is connected to the other big pencil. Now we just need a speaker to hear Jordan calling us. This old one from a real telephone has two terminals on it. Our long cable connects to them like this. And our homemade telephone is ready to make its first call. Beans on toast are the best lunch ever. Oh, gross! That's disgusting! Phew! Some boys have no manners. I wonder why beans make people fart. Let's see if we can find out. Damon and I are on a fart fact-finding mission. We're going to get to the... uh... bottom of farting. We're each making a fart machine to see if we can imitate Damon dropping one. He is cutting up a rubber glove. 
Meanwhile, I'm mixing up a batch of borax laundry powder in warm water. Now for some craft glue. That should do it. A bit of water in there. Mix that together. And my slime is coming along nicely. A bit of food colouring to make a mucky coloured. Red and blue. Now to add my borax mixture. This is the secret to my slime. Damon's busy attaching his rubber glove to a length of hose pipe. That should work. If there's one thing Damon's an expert in, it's farting. Hey, check this out. The craft glue has turned into thick glue. This is gonna make great fart material. I just squish some of my sloppy slime into a film canister. Hey, it works! Gross! I am disgustingly clever. Let's see yours, Damon. What a ripper! That sounds like Damon after a whole can of beans. The gas inside our digestive system comes from three main sources. We swallow air as we're eating, digestion produces gas in our stomach, and bacteria living in our intestines produce gas as they help to process our food. The sound that farts make is caused by vibration of the opening in our bottoms as the gas is expelled under pressure. Some foods, such as baked beans, contain sugars that us humans can't digest but the bacteria in our intestines really like. As they feast on the sugars, the bacteria make an extra big batch of gas for us to squeeze out. So we can blame beans for making us fart. And Damon can blame his belly bacteria for that awful smell. Hey, Dana, those beans really are giving me wind. Oh, Taran, yuck. That's a lot of wind, all right. Nearly enough to blow Saif along in his sailing boat. I love sailing in my father's boat. There's nothing better than feeling the wind in the sail. With a good breeze, I can sail as fast as anyone. I'd like to build my own boat. Then I could sail away and explore the oceans. If I'm going to build a boat one day, I'd better start practicing. I think I'll start with a raft of corks. I'll tie lots of corks to these wooden sticks. It's just like making a rail raft, only smaller. Now for a sail. This sheet of card will catch the wind. That can poke into the middle of the raft. There, ready to hit the high seas. Let's see how she sails. There's some wind blowing down at the water's edge. Yay! Off you go, little boat. For centuries, people have been harnessing wind energy and putting it to use doing everything from pumping water to grinding flour. These days, we're even turning wind energy into electricity. Hoisting a sail is a great way of capturing wind energy and using it to move a heavy boat across the water. The greater the area of a sail, the more energy it captures and the faster the boat goes. My very first boat, and it's a beauty. Now I just need to build one big enough to carry me. Mmm, ice blocks. These are delicious. I could eat another one. But Mum said keep our hands out of the freezer until tomorrow. What if something else picked up more ice blocks for us? We can't get into trouble for that. And these sticks are going to do our dirty work. We're going to build a model arm. And these are the bones. OK, a little cut in the end. Now another one at an angle on the side. There, two cuts. Now on the second stick, I make two little cuts at one end. Like this. Now take a small elastic band and join the two sticks together. Join the notched end of the first stick to the unnotched end of the second. Now bend and use another small elastic band to join the sticks from the other angle. You get a crisscross of elastic band like this. There, this is the elbow joint on our arm. Time to give it some muscles. Take a long elastic band and attach one end here inside the elbow and stretch it out to join on the other end of the arm. 
Now stretch a second elastic band from the elbow to the outside of the arm. There! We are armed! Jade's clever model arm shows how the human arm really works. The bone in our upper arm is called the humerus. Running down the back of the humerus is a muscle called the triceps, which gives you the power to straighten your arm. At the front of the humerus is the biceps muscle. It gives you the power to bend your arm. When your brain tells your arm to move, the relevant muscles quickly fill with blood, which makes them contract and pull on the bones. OK, time to put my plan into action. Look, Mom, no hands. Well, not in the freezer, anyway. I know that was a bit naughty. But I don't think we did any real arm. <laughs> Those two sneaks got away with a second ice block thanks to their clever contraption. Jordan's about to use another clever contraption to get exactly what he wants, too. Time to install our homemade telephone. Jordan's going to love this. First, a quick lesson on how to work it. OK, put the speaking end near Jordan's bed and we'll take the cable back outside with us. Now back to our game of checkers. What's that clicking? Oh, it must be Jordan calling. Yes? Hmm, yes? He wants orange juice. Our helpline is working. One glass of juice. When Jordan clicks his fingers, the sound vibrations are picked up by the small pencil. When it vibrates, it momentarily breaks the flow of electricity through the circuit. The speaker at the girl's end turns the interruptions back into sound vibration for the girls to hear. Finally, back to the checkers. Oh dear, he's calling again. What? A chocolate milkshake and donuts? I think it's time we disconnected this phone for good. What's that, Jordan? And now you want me to bring you a pizza? We can't make a pizza, Taryn. We're in the middle of a show. But Jordan says we've reached the end of the show. And hold the anchovies. See, See you next time. time.